Uh, hi, Igor. Uh, thank you very much for uh, accepting to uh, to chat with me on uh, the podcast Fitnessship. Yeah, hello, lady, and thank you for having me here. Much appreciated. So um, um, we don't have that many uh, English speaking podcasts in 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 this podcast because uh, because of the name itself is uh, yeah. fitness in Albanian. However, you know we we all live in a global world, and uh, no matter what we do, we interact with uh, people from all over the world. So yeah, uh, we need to maintain that international standard. You know. Exactly. So that's why it's in inevitable that uh, every now and then we have some episodes in English. And I think uh, uh, most of the people that hear that po this podcast, they also know English. So that should be fine. Yes, of um, course. But um, uh, I would like to uh, start by maybe uh, giving you the word to give a quick introduction about yourself. You are free to say whatever you want about yourself. Um, Anything personal, not personal, it's it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, sure. I will so, just. Uh, my name is Igor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like I'll just introduce myself. Uh, ethically, I'm Korean, uh, but I grew up in Russia and China. It's a bit complicated. So I've been living in Tirana for two years now, and I always wanted to find a fitness club, you know, the gym for myself. And yeah, I found this elite uh, sporting sport at the gym. So I've been going there like for seven or eight months now, I think. And I like it. I'm still doing it. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that I've also met you there. And um, I, I I, almost know we, we are kind of a niche fitness club. So I, we kind of know all our clients that come in. That's why we don't have the, you know, the car that you go in and check in. We always know people just by faces yeah. and by talking to them. Um, so I know almost all the customers that have uh, come and they've stayed and so on. So I've also known you there and um, I've seen that you are quite consistent in your training and you have set yourself some goals and you've seen some results and so on. And that is the main reason why I wanted us to have this chat mm -hmm. uh, for you to share a little bit uh, more about your experience. I mean, the, the whole uh, purpose of, of the podcast is to share some experiences with people and to kind of motivate people to get into yeah. The world of fitness. Uh, so for me, mm -hmm. uh, it's actually, I started doing sports. It's because I, I, I found that I had a sort of health issues maybe. Because before I was really overweighted. On my peak, I was about like 110 kilograms. It was a lot. And the doctor suggested me like, you need to do some sports, exercises, like in order to lose weight. And I was like, okay, I'll do it for myself. First of all, you know, because like mm. all of us need to consider about our health. And after going like for four months, maybe I have seen the results, you know, I felt the strength. I felt that my endurance and stamina, everything's improving and it just became a habit. And yeah, this is my story. Like, but my first consideration was the health, first of all, and I started to do gym. So which it's, it's a little bit interesting, your profile, since you have been traveling uh, in different countries uh, in the world. So yes. did you did you start your fitness in your fitness journey in another country? Was was that related a little bit? Also, you said it, health issues, but were you also pushed a bit by the culture of a specific country, or it was purely just uh, health related? Oh, uh, not really. Because I've been doing sports since the young age, to be honest. Uh, but it's like I wasn't that consistent. I didn't put that my dedication before. Mm. I would just do. Maybe I'll go to the gym like for two months, then I stop. Then I'll do it like after a year, I'll, I'll go again. But on a daily basis, like I, I used to play like basketball and extra. But yeah, like, because, uh, you know, like when the whole uh, pandemia started, we all have been staying home, you know, eating and sleeping, that's all. And I didn't do that much exercises and I gained a lot of weight and I, I felt myself, you know, like disgusted by myself because I was mm. like so weak and I couldn't do anything. And yeah, and doctor told me like to like to try and lose weight first. So we, this was my like first motivation here in Albania to become that consistent. So I started to go to the gym and put my dedication in Albania here in Tirana. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, so is there what is your then now you have started it and so on. So what is your main drive now? Because it has changed a bit, I think. Right now you're. Getting into uh, my main drive is uh, to keep me fit, maybe, mm -hmm. 
and and to kill the time like for sure because to be honest i i found it here a bit boring and going to the gym like is like one of the main entertainment like in my in my daily life now mm-hmm. I, like i just spend there like two hours doing my things it's nice and also meeting people because uh like i be i become like part of the gym and i like know the customers and stuff and it's nice to be there you know to have a small chat to see people yeah yeah sounds good so what what uh kind of uh let, let's talk a little bit about the training type that you do so at least sporting club is most specialized in functional training and you can see yes. that from the different classes that we offer but also the setup the equipment and so on is this also your favorite uh, type of training as well? Uh, for the uh, for the functional part, uh, yes, I started with the um, with doing some. I think I've attended a CrossFit maybe or not, but I didn't have that time because you have the classes on specific uh, days, right? Hmm. And during my free days, I only could attend boxing, and I also had some experience in boxing before. And boxing is also like one of the best functional trainings in my opinion. Because you're doing like heavy cardio, like circuit training and everything boxing. So yeah, I've been like doing boxing twice a week for six months in the in the elite. And, and also, perhaps uh, um, uh, except of the classes, I also go there for open gym as well. Yeah, just but, full body workout. And that is also functional training, right? That you do yes, by yourself. So I I maybe I might do some after the training, but I also do a lot of uh, weight lifting now. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm because I want to build muscles now, like to gain gain in shape more. So I'm changing my view, like from just losing weight and doing a functional training to particular like uh muscle gain training. Yeah. Right now. I've seen I've seen that you are pushing and pulling some big weights recently yeah, yeah i do it just for fun <laughs> <laughs> so is it uh is it more power lifting or because i've seen you do mostly deadlift squats what about olympic weightlifting or oh uh, i mean like snatch and uh clean and jerk it's not about power lifting but those are core exercises right like uh, yeah. bench press squats and deadlifting is like it's the base of mm. uh, of the body so I'm doing quite often, yeah. So it's like um, lifting, like, I mean, how to explain? I don't have a specific program. I'm just doing like what I think to, like, for example, but I separate like pulling and pushing uh, types of exercises, like for back, shoulders, chest. So I have something in my mind. I'm just doing it. I'm not, I'm not strict with, with training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, is there any particular exercise that you particularly like and uh, you'd like oh, to? Oh, yeah, I quite like deadlift because I found that I'm pretty good at it, you know. Uh, I, I didn't know that I have that much strength. I also love to train legs. I have a, like very powerful legs, I think. Mm. Yeah, those are my best. So what was your PR in deadlift? Was it this 190? Uh, yeah, I tried 200 later. So right now it's 200, but I really? think it's, it's going to be more, yeah. Nice. Sounds good. Sounds good. I guess you also need to do uh, s- some auxiliary exercises to improve your deadlift, but mainly it helps if you just, you know, do deadlift and you will, if you train a lot just on deadlift, then you will lift more on deadlift. Yeah, of course. But of course you have to have good, strong legs, strong lower back, strong upper back, strong core, mm-hmm. everything. Deadlift is one of those exercises that is really full body. Uh, yeah, it is. I feel it. Cool. Is there any other? Uh, so you said you like boxing. You also like uh, weightlifting. Recently, I've also seen you have attended some kickboxing classes as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Also, boxing and kickboxing is like it's sort of the same because we have the same instructor. You know, we have the same group of people. So yeah, I'm attending boxing and kickboxing. Sounds good. Sounds good. So what do you think about the fitness culture in Albania in general? I, I mean, I know that you, you said it yourself, you probably, since you are um, kind of an expert in Albania, you maybe don't have um, a large circle of people that you know, but 
I guess just from the experience that you have, what do you think in general about the fitness culture in Albania? If you can co compare it with another country that you know well. I mean, yeah, I've been to the gym in other countries, like in China and UK. I don't know, like I found in Albania, like everyone is, is more friendly, to be honest, you know? Like uh, they will just approach to you, like make conversations. Uh, I will give you a hint chat. here. Albanians are very friendly with foreigners, but with themselves are not that friendly. But that's, oh, really? That's uh, maybe thing. like because for me, like <laughs> before, like I remember like going back, like, back in the UK when I attended the gym, people were just doing the, their own thing, you know, just nothing. No one is talking. No one's like looking at each other, like no connection at all. Yeah, yeah but, but here, here like, you you feel more welcome. Yeah, I am. I am. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, happy to to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if if in Albania uh, you have maybe scanned a bit the the market of fitness centers. What do you think in general is the the offer uh, from the from the different fitness centers. Oh, uh, the have offer any... you mean about the price or what? No, 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 not the price. I mean, what they offer uh, in terms of like equipment, classes, expertise, uh, oh. spaces, things like that. Have you done or you just uh, came at a little sporting club and that's the only no, one? No, I was, I was in another gym before close to my place. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found it uh, super crowded first of all it's like it's a small place with a lot of people especially during the time like uh from six to seven maybe you just yeah. cannot breathe there you know you just cannot breathe mm. like you need to wait for the bench like for 20 minutes at least it's like <laughs> how come it's possible and uh, for elite because you also have like most of the customers come like at this specific time from six to seven right but I go there like a bit earlier uh, to uh, feel more spacious, to hit, to have like equipments that I use, and I like it because you know I don't I don't I don't like super crowded gyms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we have also like the whole concept that you have the sp different spots, like all the different uh, class spaces. They are um, yeah, yeah. You have like different. They are classes, dedicated to the classes to, uh, according to the time schedule, so the person knows when to come and when to leave and exactly, to do the things. Yes. Yeah. Now, recently, as you know, we have expanded a bit the the open gym area. I, I'm not sure if because it's completely redone uh, this year in January February time. I think you were there before as well, so you you saw the the change, right? Yeah, you added a space with the mirrors for benches, right? Yeah, and and also the the leg area and uh, oh yeah, and a, a few new equipment equipment for equipment. the legs. Yeah, yeah so that. Nice. And the other cool thing also is that you can uh, choose to attend either classes uh, and the open gym, but or just the open gym. But if you choose to go to classes, the open gym is included as well. So that's yeah, also course, yes. um, something that we basically we try to you know push people to to embrace fitness just like you have and do it for for pleasure yeah. um, uh, in my opinion attending the classes uh really motivates you because when you're training like the group of people you see then that everyone is working their asses off you know like you want to put yourself to the limit as well mm. so yeah yeah exactly we have recently had a podcast here uh, in albanian about the do the uh, what is the positives of doing uh, group classes? And uh, mm -hmm. we have talked in in length with uh, what are the um, benefits of it. And one of the biggest benefits is the motivation, of course, because you push one yeah. another, um, and you also make the make the most use of that time of that one hour that you are there. You really push yourself because you have you are on schedule and you are together with others, so you cannot just bail out. Um, yeah, it's very intensive. Oh, that, that's the whole, uh, that's the whole idea. Um, cool, cool. But uh, what else can you tell us about the experience? Like, um, I mean, we talked quite a lot about, uh, about the, the, the elite sporting club concept as such, but is there any other thing that you, you like about, like, what about like, you know, you have a booking system and you have, 
you have a set of rules and standards that you have to kind of follow. And do you see that those have resulted into this better experience, so to speak, than a, a gym like the one that you mentioned that there is no um, there is no such set standards and then they could lead to overcrowded or like a less um, enjoyable experience in terms of, you know, using equipment, having your own space and so on? Yeah, uh, first of all, why I choose the lead? Because uh, I wanted to attend that classes, as you said, you know, because I, like, I, I never had experience attending the fitness classes, but uh, I thought that if I will do something with the group, I'm really going to like push myself because uh, the, the hardest part uh, of working out, starting like to go to the gym and put the dedication is to go there, you know? The first month is, is going to be so hard. You're going to be so lazy mm. about it. But if you, have, if you have the classes, you have a schedule, right? You will attend it because, like, you know, you paid money like for a lesson. Now you need to go there, of course. Well, otherwise, it's going to be a waste. And, yeah, I started with the, the functional training. Uh, but after, like, because it's also about, about my own time schedule because I didn't have time of course. to attend classes. So I started to do like open gym and compared to those super crowded gyms, uh, I found it light uh, and how to explain because uh, I know all of the customers basically who comes to elite now, mm. I've been there like for several months. And for me, like if you have, um, if you have people that you know, and they are training with you, it becomes like a community, you know, and you feel yourself comfortable there. Like, for mm. example, I'm not a huge guy. I'm not like an expert, uh, but I've been training for like uh, a period of time. I know some exercises and maybe there are like some new guys, younger boys who will come and they will ask my suggestions, you know, like I feel a bit proud also from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And that's the whole idea of the club part. So the name as well, Elite Sporting Club, the club part is exactly for this. And I'm I'm very proud that we have achieved that. And you have actually kind of mini clubs inside the club because the club that you are talking about, that's the guys that go to boxing, kickboxing and the open gym area. You have another club that is the cross training one um, yeah. that they go quite often there. We have cross training class every day. There is another club that is the morning club. That club is like they do cross training as well, but they are just uh, morning. And then you have another club that's the body bike club. I don't, I'm not sure if you ever tried the body bike class. I think I've tried once. Uh, okay. It was like in Saturday morning. Uh, but you know, like it's so, so, so hard to wake up in Saturday morning. <laughs> for me. So like I just went there once, mm -hmm. but it's also very good. Yeah. So, so people like, of course, that's the other part of, of the experience that you have different things that you can choose from and find yourself where which one do you prefer the most um and that 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 having that option options and choosing the options is also part of uh, of what uh, the gym offers um yes so yeah so that's that's very i i really like that part because as you say like it it um it it makes you want to go there and then once you are there you do good things you train more and you also push others and also push yourself so that's quite positive at the end of the day to to yes, do yes like positive vibes mm -hmm. what about the the part where uh, during the classes like how much you interact with the trainer because i think that's also a very important point like since the classes are also limited to a few people you have more interaction with the trainer and yes, we do. do. Do you learn a lot from that? Do you benefit from that? Oh, uh, I think so. Yes, because basically uh, the training gives you the clear uh, uh, setups, right? Like what are we going to do, like for this class? So basically, you have a plan already for the next hour. You know what you're gonna do. And another thing is the timing. You know, like he he makes the he keep the timing. He counting the the reps Perhaps. and extra. Mm -hmm. So you had you, like you have a feeling that this is like much more disciplined if you will compare it to if you will train by yourself. What about the technique of the different exercises? Do you um, do you feel like from the classes you have learned a little bit of technique? I mean, from boxing you probably have not done a lot of deadlift and squats, 
But yeah. uh, like, how do you approach that if, if you'd like to learn a little bit more? I mean, uh, yeah, from... of course, because uh, after doing so many functional and circuit training, like you just memorize, you know, the combinations and what can you do. So like for full body workouts or circum workouts. So it's like it's, it's in your head right now. Mm. So, for example, like if, if someone will ask me, like, what, what you're going to be, what, what can you suggest me like to do like uh, home, like, for example, for, for my home workout? So I can just tell him like what we are doing in the classes. Yeah, but that's very uh, important point. So the functional training and that you mentioned, the secret training that that uh, that builds the base for you to then transition to something else that you'd like, just in your case, you wanted to go more into strength, but having that foundation of the basic functional training that really helps you uh, on the movement and the mechanics of the movement of your body. Mm -hmm. So that's that's actually a very important point as well. I think we kind of exhausted exhausted the talking about the, the, your experience, so it's mm -hmm. much appreciated. Uh, well, what about? Can you tell us a bit uh, about your experience in Albania in general? What you said that you like the hospitability what else have you have you noticed uh albania like it's my second year here and uh i like this country i mean yeah it's it's very really beautiful especially like, during the south uh during the summer time on the <laughs> south coast it's like a paradise you know you <laughs> just enjoy it like, where you know, where in the south have you been oh like everywhere like yeah let me around i mean like Chiparo, like mm -hmm. everything, Borsh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> more than me, probably. <laughs> yeah, more than you, probably. I've been traveling a lot here in Albania. Sounds and good. a lot of beautiful, like, natural spots. Mm. That's true. And, like, uh, day, uh, daily expenses, I mean, it's not... It's, it's, it's pretty cheap to live here, in my opinion, like, compared to other European countries. I'm sure you know about it as well. <laughs> like the prices are like are super friendly i can say like that yes and the people are like oh, welcome you know they are like friendly and kind-hearted most of them sounds good sounds good that uh that sounds very good but what uh which country is home for you then you said originally you're from korea but do you have a country where because you are traveling i guess together with your family right everywhere right to be honest i don't have it I mean, I've been living in uh, four different countries for like, uh, for average, for five years, you know, five, six years. So yeah, I was always like around. I like, for example, I was born in Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to China. I lived in China for six years. Then I went to UK. I lived in the UK for seven years. And then I came back to Albania. It's my second year here. So I really don't have the, the hometown, you know. My home is like where my family lives now for me. And they are now in Albania with me. So Albania is my home now. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Uzbekistan is a very, I think, uh, kind of exotic country for a lot of people. They don't know a lot. Yeah. Uh, recently there, there was the World uh, Weightlifting Championship. I don't know if you saw. Oh, yeah, I think so. It was yeah, in Uzbekistan yeah, like just last week. It a lot. Yeah. We had a uh, few Albanian weightlifters there who got very good results. One of them was champion in uh, snatch in his category, 73 mm -hmm. kilos, Rick and Sally. And then second total. And then we had a few others who also performed quite well. But Uzbekistan seems to be a little bit of a weightlifting country. Uh, quite a lot of weightlifters. Yeah, they, they there. do promote it, I remember. Like, they like weightlift and boxing. Like These are like two main sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, quite interesting, and uh, I would actually very much like to visit that. And it's also Korea, actually. Quite a lot of good weightlifters from Korea as well. Um, seems to be also a country that promotes it. I think Korea, I, I didn't hear about Korea, but I know that Chinese deadlifts yeah. are crazy. Bro. Chinese it's, are crazy. It's Chinese also, Chinese is also a very, it's a very much weightlifting country. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's about, uh the discipline and also at about the preparation from the youth you know basically they have a bunch of different uh gyms and 
who develop the youth and then you have like the whole competition so they are finding the talents from the young age and training them till the like till till they will win the olympic medal or something so they're heavily pushing sports like this kind of sports back in uh, China. Yeah, and and they've also uh, had a lot of very good results. They have also invented in weightlifting. I don't know if you're aware, but it's called the Chinese jerk. That's when you receive when you're uh, when after you do the clean, mm-hmm. you do the jerk down on a squat on a on a overhead squat position. That's called it like a Chinese uh, jerk. Chinese jerk. And, Yeah, it, it is because all the Chinese weightlifters they use that technique. Do the they're technique. they're very good at it. Uh, it's very it's the hardest one to do actually, but they have practiced it quite a lot and they're very good at it. So that's yeah. why it works for them. They have their own secrets, I guess. <laughs> yes, probably, <laughs> probably. So where where are you going next then? Uh, I'm currently staying here in Albania. I'm not sure about Nas because you know the whole thing about it, COVID. It's it, it got us like very frustrated and mm. and annoyed to be honest, right? So I'm still hoping that the world will recover soon and we'll go back to our normal lives without any like consideration as an issue and issues. So I'm just waiting. In Albania, you can you can say COVID is not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you a don't big of a problem. <laughs> Only uh, when like everything is closes after eleven. That's all. During the daytime, it's so free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. It was quite problematic uh, last year. I don't know if you were through that. Yeah, but, well, uh, I was here last year as well. Yeah, there was uh, one period where it was complete lockdown for three months, and then there was a period when they were closing things at 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. That was also a bit. Uh, Yeah, Hard. and you also yeah. needed to get the permission, right, to go out. I remember. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. it's like super harsh. Yeah. It's, it's very strict. But on the other hand, like because Albania, it was so strict here. That's why nowadays it's still like in the green zone. It's not falling yet. Yeah, and uh, it was also quite an interesting time for the gym uh, during that period. Uh, yeah. so, I but, mean, uh, you suffered a lot, I think. I think every business suffered. Uh, yeah. um, we we did do a lot of uh, different things. We did online training. Mm-hmm. Um, we changed the schedule. We limited the number of people in classes. Um, but that's more or less all we could do. Uh, judging, I mean, judging from the situation. So, but hopefully that that will be gone now and it will not. Yeah, repeat. it's all in the past. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, it's in the past. Okay, Igor, I think uh, these were the the points that uh, I wanted to chat with you. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate your uh, your time and uh, sharing your experience. Yeah, and you uh, I, I wish you all the best in all the things that you do. And uh, I hope to see you at the gym for a longer time. Yeah, I will. As far as I'm in Albania, I'll be there. <laughs> Don't worry. Sounds good. And uh, I will come and have a nice weightlifting session with you. Uh, And I'm sure. there soon. No worries. I'll get you around then. All Thank right. you for having me. Take care, man. Bye. Bye-bye.